I think we should start to cover some of the different brands that are on Amazon, off Amazon, and the way you would handle them. So really there's four type of brands when it comes, of course, to Amazon and the e-commerce platform. The first is a brand that has no presentation on Amazon. This is high risk, high reward, because you're going to have to grow it from stage one. But if you are able to grow it, the partnership is going to last Ooh. and the rewards are going to be huge. And you could really customize the listings to the way that you and the brand envision it. And you can make sure, make sure that other sellers aren't able to get on those listings by using certain bundling strategies and other brand registry strategies that we're going to cover. Absolutely. Now this number one option of types of brands to reach out to, this is probably the most challenging to build and to grow because there's absolutely no presence on Amazon. So every single aspect of building this brand on Amazon, you are going to have to do. Number two is a brand that is on Amazon, but it doesn't really have its brand marketing goal set up as far as a strategy to work with sellers. So you see the brand on Amazon, like a lot of Procter & Gamble products, let's say, because they're so big, they're not really concentrating on Amazon. And there's all sorts of sellers selling their, their products and their brands and they don't really have an organized central method when it comes to Amazon. So this, this is a great, great brand to want to work with because here you have a brand that has a lot of potential. It already is marketed well in brick and mortar stores. However, it doesn't have a central plan when it comes to Amazon, which brands love to have. They love to have a strategy. That's why they, they want only authorized sellers. They want map pricing. They want customized listings. They want uniformity throughout the brand. And a lot of Amazon isn't about uniformity. It's still like the wild, wild west with a lot of these listings, especially for brands that aren't registered. And so here is a huge opportunity for you to come with the strategies that we're going to provide and show the brand why you're the key partner to take them from this wild, wild west scenario to the vision that they have in their brick and mortar. Because most likely they want that, they just don't know how to get there on Amazon. Yeah, and really this is like the sweet spot, this number two here, this is the sweet spot. Because these are brands that might already have a really good presence on Amazon listing selling three, four, 500 a month. But like Sebastian said, it's the wild, wild west. There's six different sellers on it. Sellers are dropping in, dropping out. It goes out of stock for two weeks. The company's missing out on valuable sales. Maybe there's no advertising campaigns. These are one of our favorite type of brands to work with because the opportunity is huge. And that's brands that have other third parties selling their products on Amazon. That's right. The third is a brand on Amazon that Amazon sells their products. Now, a lot of people see this, it's like, I'm not touching this. Amazon's selling them on Amazon's own platform. There's no way the brand's gonna wanna work with me. Well, you'd be surprised, and we have brands that were previously on Amazon that we've met with, and we talked about their pain points, we learned their pain points, and we showed them why we were a better partner, even though we're way smaller than Amazon. Why is that? Because when you work with Amazon, Amazon will never abide by Mac pricing. Amazon will always take care of Amazon first before the brand. And then of course, of course, when it comes to having Amazon sell your products, you're never going to have a direct contact. You're, if, if the brand wants to change something in their strategy, they have to reach out to support through Vendor Central the same way we do with seller support. So they're never gonna have a direct contact. And then the last piece is that Amazon has ridiculously long net terms. You know, for some of the largest, largest brands out there, they have 60 day net terms. When it gets to some of the smaller brands, they have 180 day terms and then returns, refunds, chargebacks are all charged back to the brand. So 
Amazon is always taking care of Amazon first, and that's where you come in and you show why you being a smaller team can solely focus on them, can direct your energies to them, their strategies to them. If they need something, they can contact you directly and you will be focused on them. Now the last, number four, is a company that only the brand is selling on Amazon. So number two, had the brand and other third party sellers. And now this one is strictly the brand on the listing. And there's a lot of opportunity here because what you need to understand is that brands are good at building brands. They're not Amazon sellers. You understand what it takes. Whether you're doing private label, retail arbitrage, wholesale, you understand that it takes a lot of work and a lot of trial and tribulations to build a successful Amazon business. So these brands here that are strictly selling their own products on Amazon, they struggle a lot with the finances and the returns and the customer inquiries and the packaging and the shipping. They don't know what's going on, but you know what's going on. This is a huge value point to providing these companies with opportunity for you to represent these brands on their listings. And if we go back to the sauce company that we were talking about, this sauce company that brings us over a million dollars in revenue alone, they were selling themselves on it. Mm. And we had to convince them, show them that we were a better fit. And nowadays the owner says, he doesn't even know why he ever sold on Amazon because it took away his focus from growing his product line, from going, growing his brand, from marketing, from all the things that he is really good at, that he's really experienced at, that he's a professional with. You are the professional when it comes to your vast experience on Amazon, to fulfillment, to finding competitors listings, mimicking them, looking at your competitors keywords, looking at the keywords that are driving sales, and then putting those into your advertising campaigns, embedding them into the titles, descriptions, and bullet points, customizing listings, and don't worry, even if you aren't a graphic designer or you don't have any uh, HTML experience, we have sources like Fiverr and freelancers, which will build that for you. And you don't even need to tell the brand that you're going outside. You just tell the brand you have sources to build their value because that's what it's about. You wanna build their value so they can focus on what they're good at and build their value internally while you focus on Amazon. Because that's great, you find the brand, but you don't just go send an unthought out email to them like, hey, I'd like to sell your products on Amazon. Like, It needs to be more information in that email and it really needs to hit the spot because there's literally dozens of other Amazon sellers sending them emails on a daily basis what is going to separate you from the rest of them? What's going to separate you from the herd?